All right, welcome to the lesson planning module. RALP tutors are gonna come from a variety of backgrounds and not everyone is gonna have prior experience as an educator. So if you're familiar with lesson planning, that's great. But if this is your first time as an educator, welcome. No matter what your skill level, working individually with an adult student on literacy is gonna be a unique scenario and it will take some time before you're proficient. Even then, you'll always be finding new ways to improve your approach. So in this module, we're gonna give you some tools to reach this proficiency. Think of them as training wheels as you get the hang of tutoring and you build trust with your student. So we're gonna be covering uh, the following topics. Crafting, lesson plans, using assessments and learning plans to customize your lessons, frameworks for planning for the first year, and your communities of practice um, around your commitment of, of tutoring. So right off the bat, before we get started, I want you to make a lesson plan for your first one hour lesson with your student. I know this, may i know what you may be saying here uh, we haven't learned to do that and yes that is the point we want you to have a starting point uh without learning anything so <laughs> while you go through this module you can refer to the plan that you made now and see what you might be, do differently or what you did right or what uh where you um had an idea that we didn't have. You can take as much time as you want on this, but give yourself at least 10 minutes to do an honest effort in this lesson plan. So pause your video, make the lesson plan, and when you're done, press play to move on to the next module. Have fun, and don't worry about getting it wrong. You can't. Pause. Okay. So now let's go over some of the basics of lesson planning. Starting with simplicity. As we've covered in previous modules, it just takes a lot of brain power to learn how to read, write, speak. So not only that, but there's also so much going on in everyone's life, both yours and students. And because of this, the hour you spend in tutoring should be straightforward, reasonably predictable. Cut down on the things that are taking yours and your students' attention so you can focus on the skill or strategy of the day. Think of your lesson plan like a Zen garden. You create spaciousness with a curated structure and feature just one or two elements that make an impact. So it's important to start with a measurable objective in mind. So you can create your, your whole plan to achieve this objective, and then you can gauge your effectiveness after the fact, based on whether this objective was made, met. So to make an objective, you're gonna follow these four steps here. First off, you're gonna identify the noun, the what students, uh, you want students to learn. So you got, I don't know, seven steps of the research process. Okay, then you're gonna, identify how far you want them to get in attaining that knowledge. And here's Bloom's taxonomy, um, a imperfect model, but a reliable one as well. Um, these are the levels of knowledge. So from just remembering it to being able to create with it. What's, what's useful about this taxonomy is that it gives you um, language to describe what you want the student to be doing. Um, with the observable action. So say we want them to understand the seven steps of the research process, therefore describe the seven steps back to you. Um, then you're gonna add, uh, uh, so that's the first three steps, what, what level, and then what action. Then you're gonna add some criteria about how, when, based on the specific uh, context of the students say, um, dis describe the seven steps um, of the research process when writing a, a paper or describe the characters in the short story, uh, Three Little Pigs. 
right? So you're going to create this objective and then you're going to craft your lesson plan around it. And the way you're going to craft your lesson plan, we've talked about this in the um, cognitive de development module, is you're going to use the four C's. So the four C's, you got connections, concepts, concrete practices, and conclusions. Connections um, are when students make connections with what they already know or think they know about the topic. In this module, um, that was the step when you created your own lesson plan. So then you're going to go into concepts. Students are going to take in new information in multi-sensory ways, and that's this module. I'm describing the concepts out loud, you're reading it on the, on the page, um, and then we're going to move into concrete practice in a second. So get ready. Uh, you're going to actively practice the skill you, you're using, using new information, participating in an active review of what you've learned. And then at the end of this mo module, you're going to participate in conclusions. You're going to summarize what you've learned, evaluate it, make a commitment to apply it to your lives. Then you'll end with a little celebration, which we will have at our in-person training. So. This is an easy way, easy mnemonic, uh, mnemonic, what do they call it? Mnemonic device to, to structure your uh, lesson plans around the way that, the, that we process information. So let's practice it, okay? Look at the lesson plan you made. Um, and start by asking yourself these questions. Is this lesson simple? Can I repeat its structure consistently? And if not, how can you simplify its structure? Does this lesson plan have a clear objective? And if not, what should its objective be? Does this lesson plan follow the four C's? Are there any of the four C's in there? And how can you add them in? Don't add, just ask the questions, but actually answer them um, by changing your lesson plan accordingly. It might mean revising the whole thing, it might mean tweaking a few things here and there, but Send us a picture of the before and the after and show us how they've changed. Um, so you're going to pause the video to work on that and then press play when you're ready to move on. Ready? Pause. So now we have made a lesson plan and you might be asking this question already, but who is it for? I mean, obviously it's for your student, but you don't have a student. <laughs> and so I want you to imagine the student who would most benefit from the lesson that you made. What's their skill level? What are their needs? What are their interests? Pause and write down a profile of this imaginary student um, and then hit play when you're done. So skills, needs, interests, go because it's important to know your student. Um, that's who you're planning for. All, as you get to know them, you'll be able to create plans that are more and more accurate to their needs and molded around their lives. But it takes time to get to know your students. How can you be expected to respond to their needs, interests, and skill level right off the bat? You just can't. As with any relationship, it takes time. But here are a few tools that are gonna help you jumpstart that process. Um, we're starting with the TABE, so we're required by the state to test all students in the test for adult basic education um, or the TABE. This is a standardized test. It gives a general perspective of your student's level because standardized tests can be anxiety provoking and the TABE's focus isn't solely on a Excuse my computer. Um, you should see this assessment as sort of more of a, as a necessary but blunt instrument, and it should only be your starting point. Um, as you can see uh, by the chart here, TABE's test results correspond with several other types of scores. You have um, the TABE score on the right, then you have the grade level, and then you have what is known as the NRS level, or the National Reporting System level. Around the NS, our NRS level, we're going to provide you with a tool to get more detailed, more nuanced, and more specific based on your individual work with your student. So um, you're going to find that in the resource folder. It's called Learning Progressions. And say your student gets a 530 on language. Okay, wait, wait, wait. 
the spectrum. So you start with the assumption that your student is at the level defined by the table. But then you want to refine that assumption. At the end of each lesson, take a look at the categories in your learning progressions document and see which is true for your student's skill in that category. Let's work this out. You got a student who gets 530 on their language test, 550 on their reading test. What is their NRS level coming in baseline? Now, look through the learner progression table and imagine a scenario where your student might actually have several levels at once in language reading. For example, um, they may be able to analyze and order information in a text, but they struggle with reading it fluently. So pause the video and spend a few minutes writing down this imagined scenario where you have this student who's got multiple skill levels happening at once. Then determine how you can fine tune and develop lesson plans that support their advanced skills, while also growing their new skills to meet those advanced skills. So again, look in your research folder and practice. Pause. Last, but definitely not least, these scores and numbers just don't mean anything if they can't apply to the student's life. As such, you've got to ask the student where they want to focus. Your student is going to be the expert in their own lives. We got a cook in the other room. Your student is going to be the expert in your own lives. And although they may not use the language of national reporting system and adult education test or whatever, but they can tell you what they want and need. And this is an area where you're gonna to need to be aware of those social emotional elements um, to, in your relationship. Your student may not be prepared to open up to you right away and they'll just have to learn to trust you over time. Nevertheless, though, we want you to use this tool from the outset. Um, the learner plan prompts your student to identify personal and professional goals that they want to accomplish through your work. So you're going to find that again in your resource folder under learner plan. Um, use this plan to break these goals into bite-sized lesson plan objectives that can transform your student's educational process. Again, if your student's not ready to answer questions, let them open to up to you over time. But we will use the information in this plan to supplement the TABE levels and fill out our picture of our program. We want you to keep this learner plan updated regularly with us at least every six months so that you're measuring how you're making progress, um, not only in the levels, but towards the student's goals. So practice it on yourself, why don't you? What are your life goals? What are the things that you want and need to learn in the next month, six months, one year? And how do you translate that into, into objectives? So, so Take a look at the learner plan and imagine that you're one of our students. Pause and fill out a learner plan for yourself. Alrighty. So you made a lesson plan for a single session. You evaluate your student to make sure the lesson plan fits their needs and interests. But can you sustain this? We've included uh, two tools that will help you craft a long-term vision of your lesson plan. And again, you find those in the resource folder. The first one shared with us uh, from Victoria Henry at UNM Taos, who also did uh, the learner progressions document. Thank you very much, Victoria, uh, is a ready-made lesson, lesson framework. And not only does she provide several months of lessons um, in this framework. She's also created detailed lesson plans that you can follow and adapt for several of those lessons. So those are included in the resource folder. So pause the video and take some time to read through those now. Um, I have stripped down Victoria's faint framework, which you will find in the activity folder. So you can use it to craft a series of lessons that achieve long-term objectives. So I've taken all, all the content content and you can now put in content of your own that's relevant to your students so try it now with the lesson plan you did earlier i know this is kind of working backwards from the way you want to be doing it here but try to imagine a long-term goal that your lesson plan can play a role in achieving 
What other skills and questions will you need to pose to ensure your goals or the student's goals are accomplished? How will you and your student culminate all the lessons to demonstrate this larger, uh, less, larger goal has been met? Again, pause the video, sketch your thoughts into this long-term goal um, so that you can fit the lesson plan you made earlier into a larger scheme. All right, so this is the last module in your initial training. So you're gonna be ready after an in-person um, meetup to become a tutor. And this is not the end though, it's only the beginning. Um, so you're gonna be playing a part in um, a community that is our program. So that comes with some expectations. We already talked about them at the intro, but I wanna go over them again. Uh, the main expectation is that you meet with your student for two hours a week. Then once a month, as you as one of your tutor meetings, I want your student, you and your student will, will join a monthly group class and, and you'll you'll be with them. So group classes once a month um, and that's part of your tutoring and then two hours per week um, individually with your student. After your group class, I want you to spend some time and experience with fellow tutors to share ideas, create that community of practice where you've been struggling and succeeding. Lastly, I want you to practice reporting your time. That's very important for, for keeping our records in order and keeping learner plans that you also send to us every six months. I mean, you can share with them at any time and we have, we're gonna have these biannual events that make sure that, you know, when you come, you just bring your learning plan, but just keep up with that. Um, it really helps us out. And of course, reach out to us at any time. We'd love to hear from you and we want to help you. So before we go, let's do the last C of the four C's, that's conclusions. Just take 10 minutes to write your reflections on the following questions. Which part of this lesson plan do you know you will use? What more do you want to learn? And how can you make sure you continue to improve? When you're all done, share all the work you did for this lesson, all the other modules, if you haven't sent them already, to us at read.develop.org and show that you finished it. Thank you so much for, for completing all these modules and we'll see you at the in-person training and get you started with a tutor. Very excited to have you on board. Thank you so much and happy tutoring.